Hey everybody, welcome to the GameCraft GameCast on thegameraccess.com. It is Tuesday, April 21st, 2015. I am Bronson Fiore, joined by... Aaron Reynolds. How you doing, Aaron? Ooh, man, I'm tired. You're tired? I've been, I've been, I've been sleeping like 12 to 14 hours a day for the last week. Woke yeah. up early today, that was a I, bad move. I, d- dude, I was on spring break. Yeah? You enjoy it? Yeah, you and you're probably wondering, like, wait, spring break? Don't you work? Yeah, I, I, I yeah. What? Okay, so at work, uh, I work in a political call center, as you know, and we were doing famous for their spring breaks. <laughs> and we were do, and we were pushing this, um, this bill. Like we, like someone, a client paid us to push this bill, try to get people to tell their senator to vote yes on a bill known as HR two. Uh huh. Um, and we, we were doing that nothing but pretty much nothing but that for a month. Now at first it was really easy and we were like do it and we were like getting done like five hours. Um, all right. It was really cool. I liked having my afternoons off. I enjoyed it. Um, but because we are calling the same nine senators and the same people over and over and over again, getting the amount of people to say yes that we needed at the end was uh-huh. torture. So wait, so you have to like fill a quota of yeses to yeah. yes. God, oh, no. And then did, did this not? Does the stuff in this bill just did not like stick with a lot of people? A lot of people had no idea what it was. Um, they had no idea, and then just like, was it? Part, is it part of your job to educate them on what it is from your perspective? Or depends or... on what the client wants. Oh, okay, yeah. and. But we we just want them to do whatever the client wants, so it gets done quicker. Of course. So right. we will absolutely lie our asses off. Cool, great, doing the Lord's work. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, okay, so spring break, uh, it's doing the HR two, uh, and we finished that. We we finished up uh, HR two, uh, and because it got voted on by the Senate, it passed. Uh-huh. Okay, just so everyone knows. <laughs> um, <laughs> thought y'all might want to know. Uh, Don't say you didn't get your news today. Yeah, Gamecraft Gamecast informative, informative journalism. We're like Fox you know, News, but you, better. Right. You know the only real news source that you'll ever need. Right. So spring break. <laughs> spring break, but yeah. we didn't have any clients lined up after this. Okay. So I have been off until I have been off since Wednesday. And we record this on Sunday. Really? Yep. And I, wow. I, I have work again starting tomorrow, though. So, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, but I have five days off, and it, like it sucks. And my next check is kind of gonna suck. But, yeah. but it's super awesome because I kind of needed it. Well, right. You need those breaks sometimes. Yeah. No. It, it was. Uh, it was. But uh, yeah. So. I was on, sp- you know, got spring break's been, <laughs> spring break as my roommate calls it, uh, oh, okay. ha- has been, because I work with my roommate, so uh-huh. that's what he calls it, so it's like, yeah, we're on spring break, and I just give this look like, I, you're technically right. Technically, is it spring? Are you taking a break? That's all it takes. Am I shitting on Do the couch? Do you beaches? Yeah. D- didn't you on any beaches watch baseball, though? Hey, you know what? That's that's good enough. That is good. Base- enough. Watching watching baseball is great. Yeah, no, who does not love base? Like, I'm really glad that I don't have like the baseball package for cable. You're glad you don't. Yes, because every week, every time I had a okay. day off, you know, I would just play like, oh, let's order like three pizzas and watch baseball all day. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, it, baseball is a sport that I don't necessarily like to put all of my concentration on unless I'm at the game. But it's the best thing when you're just you need something on the TV while you're doing something else like playing a game. Baseball is like my number one. Right, like so much. Like an NFL game, I actually want to focus. Right, it, it it commands your attention from beginning to end. As soon as you know, you just. You get you get lost in the replays and the commentary talking about the various strategies of what they could do. You're watching them line up to the line. You're you can already tell what's going to be you know what could possibly be run. It's just crazy. But baseball, 
you know, as soon as you learn how the game works, it's very much a passive experience, even from the spectators. Like, you could sit here and play a game and then occasionally look over a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Like, same thing, with, same thing with going to a baseball game. Like, last time, I haven't been to a baseball game in, like, two, three years, and, like, the entire time I was there, I was talking with my friend. All right. Uh, it's also, yeah, a really great place to talk with people. Uh, and, and, I mean, you see how many people will pay, you know, 15, 20 bucks just to go read their book. And people will look at that and think that's ridiculous, but, you know, the atmosphere of a baseball game. Oh, uh, no, no other is... sport has an atmosphere like a baseball park, like a good right. baseball park. Yeah, and I don't blame those people one bit because, yeah, to have the privilege to I, – I don't like the, you know, paying 15 bucks for the privilege of ordering, you know, a $7 drink. But uh, if you prepare properly, you know, you go in with a few drinks or of something of your own uh, – sit down and read a book and the atmosphere of a baseball game it's i'm speaking from the i'm speaking about this because i just went to a baseball game today earlier today i saw that uh, i saw those posts it was awesome they came back from uh 10 to 5 deficit who who uh, was playing i'm guessing the mariners versus the rangers Uh, oh good good which i wasn't expecting to be a super great but it was it was a slugfest and it that that was a game that I could watch for the most part. I could watch intently from start to finish, because uh, it was dramatic. But even when no. it's not, like you can sit there and enjoy yourself. It's no. one of the only sports that can do that. Now, now the the only part about baseball that I don't like is I'm a Rockies fan. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Is that the part you that you don't like? Yeah, uh, that's man, that's fair. Man, man li- life has not been kind to us. Oh uh, yeah, your time will come. It's just gotta, and, it's just gotta come back around. And then like, uh, and then it's like, what's your second team? The Mariners? Oh, oh. You know, some people them to go to the World Series. Those people happen to be from, from Seattle, but you know, don't worry about that. Don't concentrate on that. Seattle Think fans. About, oh, Seattle yeah. fans for like all sports are like crazy, and I love it. Like I love Seattle fans. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, it's it's one of it's honestly living here. It's been one of the most frustrating thi- uh, frustrating things, like how because yeah, much like, they what's believe your baseball in their team. team? You're like like you're an Orioles fan for baseball, yeah. right? And yes. a Ravens fan. Yes. So for you, you just must be in fucking agony all the time. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, like, uh, you know, it's not that I I don't dislike the Mariners. I I like to see my team succeed. I like to be, you know, I would love to be in the hometown and watch the games from there. Uh, but I can't, and, you know, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I, you know, both of us grew up in Reno, so when we picked our favorite teams or inherited our teams from our parents, you know, we never got to see those games either, so it's not necessarily anything new for us, but... Um... Yeah, yeah, but, like, the difference between, like, living in a city for, like, a different team versus living in a place That's like Reno true. where it's, like, neutral. Oh, yeah, technically I'm in Raider country, but... Even well, then. no, you're technically now in 49er country. Not like, after this offseason. It, 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 the... <laughs> no? Did the tides turn? <laughs> I mean, like, you, like, the only people they have left are, like, Kaepernick, Davis, and, like, that's it. That's true, but Kaepernick was, like, a big reason that the 49ers country, like, came surging back to Reno. Yeah, because he's, you know, he went to the University of Because he went to... Because he went to Reno, exactly. As long as they have him, I imagine that the 49ers are always going to have an edge. Yeah. Like... But, um, but anyway, like the Mariners are, are not a bad team. They're not a team that anyone really actively hates, as far as, I'm, yeah. as, far as I know. Like, they're just a, they're a cool team. They're fun. Um, but their fans uh, have a cockiness about them that I feel like was inherited from the Seahawks winning, starting to win in the last couple of years. Yeah, no, uh, I remember, like, when the Broncos played the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. Like, it was before the game, not after. After the game, just no one wanted to talk to me because it was like, you know, like, oh, that was, watching the game was pain enough. Uh, right. But, uh, like, just all my friends from Seattle talking shit. Just every single <laughs> one of them. Yeah, like, right. Emily talking right. shit. Brandon talking shit. Jen, hella talking shit. Uh, and and it's something where like I feel you feel what ex- 
So, sorry, Eric, Maybe, you, cut I, out, you cut out. Did I cut out? Shoot. All right, shoot. Um, I don't know. I wanted to say that it's something, but they're Seahawks and Mariners fans. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that they were either, you know, middle of the road or, but I don't know. Anyway, it's, teams are fun. Look, like, teams pri- are lots of fun. Pri- prior to 20, yeah, we'll say 2011, the Seahawks were just fucking a joke. Like, right. l- like they had an occasional moment here and there, but, like, you gotta think, like, the best quarterback, like, the best players in the history of the Seahawks prior to their, you know, recent success, it's like, like, Walt, uh, that tackle, Walter Jones. Yep. Steven Alexander, Matt Hasselbeck, and uh, Largent, Steve Largent. Steve Largent, yep. And it's like, dear Christ. That, <laughs> that is like, you, you can bet, like, the Ravens. Your Ravens have been around for, like, barely over 20 years. Has and, it been over 20 years? Yeah, it's about yeah, that, about that yeah, time. Like, like, in a 20-year ballpark, and, yeah. like... Like, they have so many more interesting, better players you can list off in their I, I history. Mean, Lewis, well, right, especially in Reed, recent years. Yeah, Lewis Suggs, and Reed, Suggs. Uh, even, like, uh, and then, you know, you got your Seahawks-level celebrities like Siragusa and Ogden. Yeah. Uh, but they uh, have those bigger names as well. Uh, yeah, then, then out in Denver, you know, Elway and Atwater and Davis and Bailey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, then, then, like you, then are you know Denver's local favorites, you know guys like Plummer and, um, you know shit like that. Like just, you know, Seahawks fans suffered for a long time. You know they're they're getting their due now, and that's good for them. Right. Uh, like, uh, you I know, feel I'm, like it's gotten to their head. Yeah. No, they've gone fucking crazy. Like, I will never forget reading this Deadspin article where. A Seahawks uh, or a Seattle resident watched as one car with four f- Seahawks flags on their car pulled up to a car with two Seahawks flags on their car and started berating them because they didn't have enough flags. Like, and that, that's that's what it feels like sometimes around here. The hell is wrong with people? I don't know. The hell is wrong but, yeah, with people, man? That's not to really? say like, Seattle has been great. Our neighbors have been cool. Uh, I love the place. It's just the fandom can, is a little weird. I feel no, like the city into is it. the city is awesome. Like you know, you know, I have friends up there. Like I know McKenna. Yeah. I know, like I, yep. you know, I, 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 you know, I like, I like Seattle. Its fans are fucking nuts. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've ba- been watched a fair amount of baseball. Uh, that you know, that was good. Yep. Um. Yeah, you know, really, really enjoyed that. Uh, you get some time playing games. Yeah, I did, and we'll talk about those. Oh, games, okay, all right. Yeah, I, I played two very new recent releases. Ooh. Actually, three, three new okay. recent releases. Wow. Yeah, I know. I'm excited. Right? Okay. So we'll talk about the most recent one because last week we talked Bloodborne into the ground. I got some new stuff oh, really? about it. Okay. Yeah, my my roommate not. My roommate and I have found out that Bloodborne is the greatest co-op game of all time. Is that so? Yeah, we'll we'll uh, f- further explanation later. But okay, uh, Mortal Kombat came in the mail. Oh God! Okay, uh, and you know I am a bigger fan of the Street Fighters. Yes, but I, but I enjoy my Mortal Kombat's. Absolutely, it, it, it's a great game. And the new one, story mode's really cool, choreography is really great, story's cheesy, but it's Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Um, the fighting's really good, I like the combo system, fatalities are cool, uh, I feel easy fatalities for the more casual fan is super great, uh, the game looks gorgeous, like, uh, you know, I'm playing it on the PS4, and like, like, I cannot wait to play this on PC next year. Like I'm gonna, that's I'm gonna, cool. Yeah. Like I, I, you know, I tend to build that computer next year, and like that's gonna be like one of the first games I get with GTA. Damn it! It uh, should not be this early in the console generation where we're waiting for the. No, no, I, I agree, but like, <laughs> you know. But it's true. But it's true. But I, it's, I get. Let, yeah. Let, like, here's the thing: if you wanted like console, like, here's the thing: if you, if you wanted like consoles being super high end, then they would have been like six hundred, seven hundred dollars. Like that—that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, 
Like, the reality is we are going to get, like, machines that we're going to perform really well and do a lot of cool stuff. But at the end of the day, they weren't going to be, you know, massively... Like, they're still a big upgrade over the last-gen console. Like, play any of those... Like, any of these games that are, like, on 360 and then play the Xbox One version, you're like, wow, fucking A, this is an upgrade. Huh, okay. Um, Like, Anthony did that with Destiny. Like, he played the beta on PS3, and then he got a, a PS4 with Destiny. He's like, holy shit. This, is, oh, this yeah. is like a fucking different game. Right. That's uh, true. So, so uh... You yeah, know, you're I mean, playing Mortal Kombat. And PC's always ahead. Like, fucking... There's like... It is. I just expected it to come later, like, last last generation. Like, the last time it took two years. This time it took one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. Uh, All like, right. Yeah, like last time, like in o, like O six, all the consoles were out. By O eight, it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get the PC version. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Time, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I played Mortal Kombat. Like the fighting is really good. I like I like the character list. The fatalities are great. They make Anthony sick. Um, <laughs> they did. Okay. It, it made him sick during sixty minute access. Because because like like. 40 minutes in we're like let's show off some fatalities we went into fatality practice oh and just no. practiced fatality after fatality after fatality uh-huh a lot wow, more pretty that's, great. yeah there's I, this I, one I, I, yeah. there's this one that like even i go oh that's that's a bit much <laughs> like there, there yeah, are that's... many there are many but there are a couple like that sure sure you know and it wouldn't be mortal Kombat without that uh, like, there's this one, like, the one I'm talking about is the, this, I forget the name of it, but he's one of the psychics. He throws the dude up in the air, and then he rips out his intestines in, like, a line through his psychic powers while he's hanging in the air. Then he crumples it up in a ball, lets it drop, then lets the body drop. Wow. Yeah. That's nuts. Super gross. <laughs> um, so, anyway. Uh, Anything else on Mortal Kombat? It sounds, it, it, it sounds it, good. Any questions about? Well, yeah, there, there's. I'm about to get to the negatives, but any questions about oh, okay, before right. I get to those? Uh, oh, what do you think of the new characters? They're cool. I think uh, Tora and his twelve year old friend are slow and kind of suck for Mortal Kombat, but that's oh, yeah. because Mortal Kombat I always like put speed first. Um, that's true. Yeah, I, it's like, really that, that's always been a big concern is the the characters. Like you know, they had to get away from the. Other Thailand where they had Bo Raicho and uh, people like that. I like Bo Raicho. I know there are people that like Bo Raicho, and that's okay to like Bo Raicho, But at the same time, I feel like they're trying to go a different direction <laughs> than um, the Bo Raicho that came from like, like the midway that gave us uh, MLB Slugfest. I, other such hits. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that. As much as I love MLB Slugfest, but anyway. Um. But that's that's really the question I had was you know just new characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, but my big beef with the game is unlocking stuff in the game and the DLC practices of this game. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. So in the game, uh, you want to unlock the second fatality. You can either do it by you know just doing them by looking up on the internet, or you can pay gold. Same thing with concept art, same thing with brutalities. Uh, um, the, okay. All right. Not all fatalities. You get one fatality for most characters and another one you have to unlock it by looking it up online and doing it or just, you know. Um, Which, uh, yeah, I understand that. I was, I was kind of thrown off by the idea of, like, concept art. We're the people that are paying to see the concept art. Yeah, I know. Uh, but Bang, you, can do, yeah. you can do about that with gold. The thing is, though, to to where you use that gold is this stupid as hell mode called the crypt. Right. Okay. Have you heard about this? The crypt. The crypt's been a thing. A little okay. Bit. All right. Well, this it's. I'm. Did I didn't change know it? about. I didn't know about it. So if I would have knew about about it back in the day, I would have thought it was stupid then. Because, uh, yeah, they've had it at least since Deception. Okay, well, the crypt is stupid as hell. Um, it is. It kind of is. Especially because it's tied to, like, costumes and all this other stuff. Everything. Yeah, it's, like, tied to everything you can unlock. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's you know. And I'm assuming so, it's random. It is completely random. Yep. And you yeah. gotta and you gotta like you you build up gold and then you have to just like click on like random graves or something like that to. Yep. Yep. You click on these random graves. Oh, and solve, great. And you solve random shitty puzzles that that aren't really that fun to solve. And cool. uh, you walk around these environments where there are jump scares. Uh huh. Um, I mean, it, that it, sounds it, that sounds exactly the same as uh, yeah, as as it's always been, which is kind of a bummer. Okay, well that that's the crypt. Uh, it's terrible, and uh, I don't I don't know why they keep it around. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sucks. well. Uh, they they did keep it around, good sir, and it's terrible. And oh, but wait, here's the best part. I almost forgot about this. Aaron, you want to skip skip the crypt and have all that shit unlocked, right? Yeah, you would. Absolutely. Will you pay pay twenty dollars for said privilege? What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Just just. Just, just let the butt hurt flow through you. Well, like, I mean, it's. It, I guess it's not necessarily bad because they're making you. You can still, if you don't want to pay money, you can still unlock it the same way you did in previous Mortal Kombat games. But, but the way the, you unlock the, that shit in previous Mortal Kombat games sucks. And they know it sucks, or else that wouldn't be. An or else option. they wouldn't charge that money. Yeah, like, like they, they know it sucks. Yeah. It, it's it's one of those things where you I mean obviously it seems like something that Nether Realm came up with before they were even Nether Realm, but it you look at it and it's that same kind of strategy that you see well like EA or anyone that makes like a free to play game is just like yeah this design sucks we know that this doesn't work out well and kind of messes with your fun so instead of fixing it we're going to make it a pay incentive kind of thing. Like, just, you know, or, you know, like, re- my roommate and I, Ray, he's been on a couple of shows, like, thought of an alternative that wasn't horrible and awful and shitty, uh-huh. which was, and, and didn't involve you paying real money, it's like, okay, you can you can play this horrible, shitty crypt mode, or we'll just make all the items more expensive from a gold standpoint. Right. And you, and you can earn gold... By playing the good part of the game, which is the the fighting game. Yes. Like, okay. I, yeah. I'm really mad that resources went into this when, like... It could well, have been put towards other things. Yeah they, yeah, they really could have been put into other things. Like, they could have been put into, you know, like, bring back chess combat. Hell yes, chess combat. Or chess puzzle combat. fighter. Yeah, puzzle fighter was cool. Where was Hell, all this they, shit? they did like a goat. Yeah, that's something I miss. Like, I love that they have their little arcade towers and challenges. That's been a something that they've been doing that I really, really enjoy. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I agree with that. But I also miss them doing stuff like chess combat, or I love to see them like put in a cart racer or something. You know, just a, just some some little tiny stuff uh, that they instead of putting all these resources into a crypt. Uh, you know, it. Uh, Someone has to draw uh, those maps and think of those like puzzles that like a mentally handicapped infant can solve. That's actually new. I want to ask you about that because the one thing that sounds new about the crypt is the puzzles. You didn't have to do puzzles before. Okay, well now there'll be like you'll go, you'll walk down this path and there'll be like the, a number written on the wall in blood. It'll be like okay. four twelve. And then you walk a little bit further down the path, and there's switches all with different numbers next to them. And if you pull the four switch and the one switch and the two switch, it opens the door. Uh, and you're you're a guy like walking through a crypt it's, now. It's in, it's in first person. You're walking through a graveyard, or we were in the spider's lair. What? Where we were. Uh... And then, like, and then there are these doors that are locked off where you need to find like Mortal Kombat people's items. Um, huh. So, so like, I found Raiden's staff, and at certain points, I can teleport across like rivers and shit. 
that's that's sort of disappointing but also kind of uh par for the course when it comes to mortal Kombat games uh recently is that making the game itself the gameplay and the game ideas that they come up with are amazing and totally fun uh exactly what you would want from a fighting game you know the mk9 the story was a perfect avenue to try to learn how to you would be getting a story but it would be unknowingly forcing you into various characters and fighting as them enough to get an idea of how they fight so you can figure out who you you know play better as like there was just there's a lot of stuff that they were figuring out but it seems there are these like few business decisions they're making whoever's handling their business and their marketing seems to be messing with them yeah. like it seems to be holding them back like i remember like i was watching i just looked at a little bit of the main menu and right on the front at all times is like you want to play as goro you gotta pay money oh goro. yeah I, yeah i'm getting to the dlc i'm getting there. okay all right we're getting there okay Christ almighty. Yeah, but that, but it seems like the people who are actually designing the games and making the games have everything under control. They have it down to a T. They know what they're doing, but there are these little business decisions holding them back. And I don't know if they're making those decisions or if someone else is. But all right, well, I'll get to the next part, the DLC. All right. So, uh, there's DLC for this game. A lot of it is characters that you can get through pre-ordering, okay. or just pay for them. Right, and then some of them just no, you're not getting them unless you just pay. Like I believe Goro is a DLC one right now. It is a DLC one, but I believe it was a pre-order one as well. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Anyway, moving forward. What um, other characters did they have? If like, you remember, pre- like Predator. Well, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um. Anyway, so. Uh. uh so. And that's fine. It's irritating, but it's fine. I mean, it's still probably it's probably even more irritating than the Persona 4 Ultimax ones. Because at least those were free for the first week. Persona 4 sure. Ultimax had two DLC characters that were free for the first week, and then they put out one final DLC character like a month later. For five dollars. Okay. Not, not, not the best thing in the world, but fuck it. Right. Then, um... So, yeah... But then they have the Easy Fatalities pack. Okay. Which gives the characters who don't have Easy Fatalities, Easy Fatalities. What? Yep. So they they designed Fatalities for them, took them out of that character's move list, and then locked them into a pack that you had to pay for. Yes, not not their regular fatalities. They're easy fatalities. Do you know what easy right. fatalities are? Yeah, where where you hold R two and triangle, and it does one of their two fatalities. Right. Yeah. So yeah. But some some characters still get it free. Yes, like reptile has both. So, of this, free. so like there are there there are some with more fatalities than not than others. Some of them don't have easy fatalities. Some of them do. But then the but but like in total number of fatalities, there are some that have more than others because no, some of them no, got no. there. Some of some of them just have them, and some of them don't. Oh, okay. okay, everyone has two fatalities, and then some characters have easy fatalities. Some of them don't. And then, but there are this, and then, okay, so fatality. Okay, all right, because there's also the brutalities and all that stuff. That, yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's action stupid. kills and all that. But yeah, that it's, sounds that sounds ridiculous. Yeah, it's dumb. It's really bad. Like I, you know, I was gonna buy this game when it got a little cheaper. Yeah. Uh, um, but nah, nah. And and this is published by the same people who are publishing Batman. Yep. So so I'm really hoping Batman doesn't have something like this because that's the game I'm second. That's my that was my second most anticipated game of this year. Right. Behind uh, Persona. Right. Um. That's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, they seem to make. They seem to make such a good game. Yeah, and, it's a it's a great fighting game. It really is. Oh, oh. Uh, before we move on, what which uh, which faction did you pick? Uh, it's the one with uh, Liu Kang. Like, forgot which one. Liu Kang, I want to say, is White Lotus. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, Sounds with right. Raiden and Kung Lao. Yeah, that's what I went with. Though after playing the game, my favorite character to fight with is probably Sonya. Oh really? 
Yeah. Cool. Fuck, her fucking kick special is the shit. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna get I'm gonna rent that like, game at some point. Like Ray, Ray you know, my roommate Ray was playing as a uh, reptile and fucked me up pretty bad. And then I played with Sonya and figured out her like figure out how to use her like kick special in the right way and he just got completely fucking destroyed. It was great. <laughs> um cool. Yeah. Also, there's the uh their daughter, Sonya and I believe uh it's the Johnny Cage's daughter, Cassie Cage. Cassie Cage. She has probably one of my favorite fatalities ever. Is it the one with the bubble gum? It's no, it's the one with the selfie. The selfie. I've heard about the selfie. I was watching it's, the giant bomb video, but they didn't they tried the, but they couldn't find it, but it sounds amazing. The kind of funny video has it. It's great. It's so great. Though the bubblegum one is really good too. Um So, uh the other game I played was, uh-huh. is probably the first real big triple A game of this generation that lived up to the hype. Talking about Bloodborne? Or are we talking Bloodborne. about Bloodborne? Yes. Okay. okay. That that so, game. You, you, you guys have talked about it a lot. I don't want to spend too much time on that. If uh, people are listening here, have listened to uh, last unlimited weeks. access, or yeah, no, no, or no, last no. week's, yeah, yeah, it was last week's gamecast. No, we we didn't talk too much on the gamecast. Like we talked about how it sold really well. That's about it. Okay, fair enough. And Ray and I talked about how it's video game heroin. Um, All right, but uh, well, yeah, I, 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 my curiosity is peaking regarding that game. But I, you know, like do you, I imagine you have questions about this game. I do, but I, I just have watched a lot. You know, quite a bit of video. Uh, what pushed me away from the Souls games was that I was playing it wrong. Is what I found out, which is I. Put a, I grab a sword and shield, and I just hold my shield up an inch slowly towards wherever I'm going, wait for something to hit it, then uh, counter. And it just went very slow, and then I couldn't fight the bosses because I was approaching everything that way. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, like, I mean, I'll tell you that, that there are no shields in Bloodborne. Right, which is what I've heard. There are none. Um, you yeah. get nothing. Uh, which I which I hear is supposed to make the game faster and force you to be a little more uh, aggressive. Yes, it is all about the dodging. I just linked you in the boss I just killed. And you watch that footage later tonight to get an idea of what fighting a boss in that game is like. And he is a boss who, like, I found on accident when I, uh, like, really early on in the game because he's an optional boss. And he just, like, down killed me in one hit. And then I, and then like this is my second time fighting him, and I whooped his ass. Huh? It was it was so satisfying. That's crazy. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Ray talks about that game as saying like it's so satisfying because you'll die a whole bunch to like a boss, and then you'll finally figure it out, and you will just have this giant rage boner, as he calls it. <laughs> uh, okay. That's what he calls it. I'm just. Uh huh. Giving you the insight. Fair. All right. Okay. Um, and, um. but, like, the like the more I play it, the more I realize this game isn't that hard. It is a challenging game. Like, there's no doubt about that. But it is not as hard as other people make it out to be. And I think it's actually a little easier than the Souls games. Not much, but a little bit. Okay. Um... And part of the reason for that is, is, like, it doesn't really tell you anything. You kind of have to figure out all the shit on your own. Right. Uh, which, I, which I like. That's cool. Uh, no. Except for the part where I'm not, very be- I'm not very good at finding things out for myself. Uh, but that's what the internet's for. Yeah, and, like, I, and actually, like, I looked up on the internet how to do a boss, and, like, it, like was really unsatisfying when I immediately killed him after that because I was oh, the one really? who figured it out. Oh, no. So, um, like, it was way more satisfying when I got help for a boss by ringing the stupid bell um, than it was, to, like, because, like, okay, well, at least I'm figuring it out. I just have bait with me. Oh. Uh, ringing a bell, it's like, it gets its attention, and then... 
Oh, uh, no. Ringing a bell is how you summon someone into your world for help. Okay, all right. Huh. Um, so, uh, what questions do you have? Because I feel like I'm better suited to ask questions I am to talk about more. Well, I mean, you know, so, so have you finished it? I mean, how no, long is it from no, what you've played so far? It's lengthy. I'm, uh, you know, I'm about, I'd say, 12 hours in, and I'm about a third of the way done. Wow, okay. Um, yeah. I, I'm six bosses out of 18 done. Wow. Well, then, uh, what, what weapons are you using? Are you... There's one loadout that you like more than another, or... Uh, okay, so my roommate and I, we, we have found drastically different play styles to this game. Um, he likes going with the heavier weapons that hit harder and putting a lot of points into strength so he hits harder and health so he can take hits. Me, I like putting points into endurance so I can keep dodging and having faster weapons huh. that don't do as much damage. All right, so, so what uh, are you using right now? Uh, I am actually use I have I actually have not changed my weapon yet. I have just keep upgrading my starter weapon uh, so far anyway, and it is the saw cleaver. So I have a cleaver. God, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Okay. So I have a fucking like it's a saw cle you know it's a saw slash cleaver. It's just a really giant ass meat cleaver. And then when I switch to its alternate mode, it folds out into being a giant ass saw. Oh. This seems like the kind of game that would have like a bunch of like uh, video game weapon of the year candidates. Yeah, like um, there's this uh, there's this one that uh, my roommate uses where it's a sword, but then he like but then like its alternate mode is to put a giant ass block on it and uh, put a giant ass block on it and it becomes a giant ass hammer. Another That's one a... is another one is a rifle spear. So it's a spear, but it's also a rifle. <laughs> That's cool. Um all right. Another one is a stake driver, so it's a gun that shoots stakes. Oh, perfect. Like yeah. is, does that have use against like you have to change weapons like uh depending on what uh enemy you're fighting or I you... like I have found that you know I have found that my weapon, personally, has enough versatility that I haven't had to switch to other ones too often. Um, but, like, my roommate will switch between, like, the sword hammer and the rifle spear. Um, All right. I know that, like, I, like, uh, my office, since you, there's only one shield in the game, and it's fucking garbage. Like, it's, That's what I've heard. It's a useless piece of shit. Right. Uh, you know, which, fair enough. I think it's meant to meant to people who are coming into Dark Soul or who are coming into Bloodborne with that same mentality that I go in where I have the shield up trying to deter you from that by offering the shield option and saying, hey, stop. Yeah, but you don't find that thing until after you kill a minimum of two bosses. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, huh. So, yeah. That, like, that's... Uh... All right. Um, but... Another question I have well, is... Uh, or are you no... going to say something? Yeah, like, you have an offhand weapon that's a, typically a gun. Uh, well, you have it in most cases. And, uh, like, it, w it can stagger some enemies in my case. Um, okay. So, like, I'll get really up close to these dudes and then blast them with a shotgun and it staggers them and then I can go in for what is almost an insta-kill. So, wow. Yeah. Oof. That's awesome. Yeah. Um... Did the has the art style gotten old for you? Has it seemed too colorless at any point? No, like it's very gothic Victorian, but it, like it has a lot, you know, it mixes in oranges and purples, and um, it really helps that like you know at the point in the game where we are, it uh, it's you know kind of straight up Victorian gothic kind of vibe, but like we're we're starting to get to the point where it turns into H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, okay. Like, relatively, like, about, you know, a third of the way through in the game, it, like, you start getting more of the lore through items and talking to people and doing side quests. And then yeah. you you get this, like, it starts turning into H.P. Lovecraft. Hmm. That, 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 that's, that is the short version of it. Okay. Um, that sounds cool. Yeah, it's, it's really neat. Um... 
Oh, I like. I'm trying to think of what else there is to say about it. Like, I, I would say go in expecting to have your first like five hours be learning. Right. You know, like just, you know, and always remember if something feels too hard, it's probably because you haven't figured out what's going on. Not that it's actually that hard. Right. Like that hmm. boss that I beat, my most recent boss kill. You know. Like, when I first fought, I was like, this is the fucking hardest thing in the universe. But I found out that it was two bosses ahead of where I'm supposed to be, for one. And, okay. And two, I found out that even, you know, that if you stay under it, and, like, you can't stay in front of her behind, but you gotta stay literally under it, hit its legs, and then go for its head, it's actually relatively easy to kill. Huh. It's still hard, but not... Oh, like, sure. And there's like a bunch of stuff like that. Like you'll fight you fight this boss known as the Blood Starved Beast, right? Okay. And the Blood Starved Beast will poison you during his fight. And you like it, but if you look around, you can find gear that helps with poison resistance. And not only huh. that, but the lead up to him drops antidotes and but, and finally, if you just are really terrible, you can go Talk, go back to like this earlier zone and find this dude named Alfred. And what Alfred uh -huh. does is Alfred will uh, like you can summon him before the boss fight and he'll distract the boss. Oh wow! Yeah. So okay. so yeah, like there's all kinds of little stuff like that. Like uh, there's this one boss named Vicar Amelia who's like this little girl who turns into this like giant monster that's like the size of this cathedral. And the strategy with her is that, at, like, when she drops below half health, she has this special ability that can make it so she heals. And you're like, fuck, well, how are you supposed to do with that? Well, there's two options. You can level up a, a whole bunch so you can hit her and do enough damage so it stops. Or if you explore a little bit in the area outside of, like, there's the secret pathway next to where you go to fight her, that if you go there, you can find this stuff called Numbing Mist... That will make it so she can't heal for a brief period of time. Hmm. Uh, that's nuts. All right. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's definitely a game I'm going to have to uh, visit at some point here. Definitely one of those big games of the year, I think. Yeah, like it, it's you know there 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 have been debates amongst the staff whether it is this or Monster Hunter. Oh. Uh, and, really. And, uh, and I personally had an easier time getting into this than I did Monster Hunter. And I found this more fun than Monster Hunter. And I think a lot of that has to do with the combat in this is super fun. Like, like, yeah. Like, it's really satisfying, and it's all based around dodging, and just, yeah. It, it, it's so wildly entertaining. It sounds like Bloodborne is a lot faster than Monster Hunter. Oh, yeah. Like, like you know... um. I, like because I'm so fast, like I spe I spec my character around dodging and speed. Um, you know, I'll be watching Ray play it, and we'll we'll have a you know we'll have this moment where it's just like he'll get hit and then he'll back away to you know regain some composure. Uh, and I won't do that because I'm faster, so I can dodge a second attack because I want to regain some health. Because if I attack right. them back in a certain window of time, I you know I get my health back, or some of that. Okay. Uh, but you're probably wondering how we like made this into the greatest co-op game of all time. That's the last question. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we what we did, is, or what we are doing, is we are not allowed to be ahead of each other as far as bosses go. Uh -huh. So the second one of us kills a boss, the other one has to wait for the person to kill that boss, the other person. Right. So, you know, they can grind or whatever, but they can't go kill the boss and progress the story. Sure. So what will happen is, is like, let's say I'm playing, and I'll explore this area and find a secret pathway and get to the boss and beat the boss. Then Ray will play... And he'll find like a secret pathway and the and, and you know a bunch of other secrets and some other stuff, and like it's our collective knowledge making this game easier. <laughs> um, and we're right. just rotating back and forth. Like I remember on the way to the third boss, the Bloodstarved Beast, 
Uh, like, I'm like, God damn, the walk back to this guy after you die is fucking long. And I'm like, <laughs> Ray, like, even with the shortcut I found, but Ray found a second shortcut that it makes it super quick to get back to him. Oh. And, and that's what I mean why, like, how, like, everything is quicker than it seems. Right. Uh, and, like, you, you realize this in, like, the very first area, too. Like, in the first area, you go through all these dudes, you, and, like, there's two paths. There's this pathway up to the bridge, and you fight these two werewolves, which early in the game, werewolves are badasses. Like, you, right. are, a, you are a werewolf bitch early in that game. Where I am, werewolves, like, <laughs> But, you know, werewolves early in that game are just, they're fast, they hit hard, and you do, like, no damage to them. Right? Like, uh-huh. I, I had to kill the ones on the bridge with Molotovs. That's how I did it. Okay. But, um, what, what ended up happening, so you can, you know, you can go to the path and go to the werewolves and go straight to the boss. And if you die, you have to start the entire section over. Well, you know, but if you're smart, you won't go on the bridge early. You'll take the alternate path, which will lead you down these stairs to this cathedral where if you go like if you stay on the ground and cut through the cathedral, you open a gate that like leads you straight to the where your respawn point is. And it makes them run back to the boss super quick, the first boss. But if you you know but if you uh so like that, you know, cause you'll notice that like every bonfire not bonfire, um God, what are they called? Lanterns. Sorry. Oh, okay. My, I mixed my dark souls with my bloodborne. Your bloodborne. My yeah. bloodborne. Um, but I, you know, I mixed my, uh, I mixed my, those two together. Sometimes I'm sorry. Hey, no problem. Anyway, um, you will. So, like, what happens early on in the game is there the, you know, or at any point in the game, it's just like, you'll notice like this gate is locked. And it opens from the other side. Or there's a device to open this door. And you'll go through and explore this area. And you'll notice these side paths. And typically if you follow them. There'll be a way to open that door or that gate. And it's like a shortcut to later in the game. So you don't have to fight through all that shit again. Huh. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Like it's. Exploration in this game is very much encouraged. That's cool. Um, yeah, because, like, I went down in the, like, early in the game, I went down in the sewers and thought, like, oh, there's nothing here, and I bothered exploring it to a dead end, and at that dead end, uh, it was worth the trip because I got a, a piece of armor I'm actually still using. Right, um, right. So, yeah. Uh, any other questions about Bloodborne? Uh, that's about all I have at the moment. I know it's a game I'm going to have to get to at some point. Uh, yeah. But it sounds awesome. It's super cool. It's, uh... Yeah, yeah. That it's it, it's it's easily my probably my favorite game of the year so far, which isn't saying much because there there hasn't been that much that I've been in love with. But not that much that's come out either, you know. Yeah, like still, Mont- it's still getting there. Like Majora's Mask was kind of cool. But, yeah, you know, I'm actually kind of like I beat the first dungeon. I'm now considering just saving the rest for the E3 trip. Uh, so, like, I can leave Anthony alone for the drive there. Right. Uh, like, he... <laughs> yeah, actually, he doesn't mind if I talk to him on the drive from Reno or the drive back up. But when we are in L.A., he does not want anyone talking to him while he's driving. I don't blame him. Yeah, that's... So, so like, instead of annoying him this time, I'm just going to, like, break out my fancy new DS. That, that Seriously, the Majora's Mask one is so beautiful. Oh, man, yeah. They know how to make those special 3DSs, man. Oh, also, uh, I beat GTA Five again. Again? Okay. Third time. Yeah, uh, so uh, have you been paying attention to our live streams? Uh, I have, I've seen what you guys have been playing, but I'm often in the middle of something, so not really, but... D- oh, damn it, Aaron. Damn it. I know, I know. All right, well, you, you, can, you can start soon, because... Uh... Right. My uh, roommate and I, we started streaming because I figured, well, let's do this. I have someone to stream with finally on a daily basis or a near daily basis on the, for TGA. And we 
you know, and we ended up uh, streaming for a while, and someone just started calling us Gamer Senpai in the chat. <laughs> and we're like, okay. A and it, you know, it, it, it kept going, right? Like, right. It, like, that kept going. So Ray and I on TGA, when streaming, are now the Super Senpai Bros. Oh, I was reading that name somewhere. I was wondering where that came from. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, so you're, we, just gonna, you're gonna start naming your live streams that at some point? That's what they're called. Super like oh. we just we just finished GTA five and it's Super Senpai Bros uh stream GTA five. Uh we're tomorrow we're just gonna play some stuff for fun, like Mortal Kombat, and then we start The Last of Us on Tuesday. Because we are doing oh, let's man. streams. Oh boy! Okay. We're doing let's plays, but streams. That's I can't. That's gonna be cool. It's it's been Wait. super cool. Awesome! I'm glad to hear that. That'll be really yeah. cool to uh, to see. Yeah. Uh. So, uh, our current plan is to finish The Last of Us, and then after we finish The Last of Us and its DLC, uh, we're gonna depending on if we have time, we either are gonna do Sunset Overdrive. Uh huh. Or Batman Arkham City, or not Arkham City, Arkham Knight. Ooh, okay. It should be out by then. Right. So uh, it depends. Like, uh, and for the Batman one, I'm been wearing a Batman shirt. He's been wearing a Robin shirt. <laughs> nice. So yeah, it, it, it's cool. cool. It's cool. That'll be fun. Uh, yeah. Um, but the last game I played was Axiom Verge. Oh yes, Axiom Verge. Do you like Metroid? Do a lot. You like Metroid a lot. All right, then you'll probably like. Do you like Shadow Complex? I like Shadow Complex. You probably like this game. It's all right. There's some I good really stuff about have, it. Yeah, it's it's very Metroid like. I don't really have much else to say. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I have, Art it, style it, looks awesome. Yeah, it doesn't help that I haven't played that much. Been too obsessed with other stuff, but yeah. Fair enough. That and the roommate and I have been watching through all of Red vs. Blue. <laughs> That's like, a good I'm get, time. I'm getting him caught up because the new season just came out. And uh, we, we just we just were almost halfway through season 11. Yeah. Going for as long as it has. Yeah. Well, uh, that's cool. Yeah, so what have you been playing? To be honest, not much, especially not as much as you. Uh, I've been playing a lot of MLB The Show. Speaking um, of baseball. Speaking of baseball. Speaking of the topic we were talking about an hour ago. Uh, yeah. Baseball. Um, you know, it, it's a simulation baseball game. Uh, if, you, if you want one of those, it is one of those. Uh, the only thing, you know, I don't know if it's been something, this is by far the most I've played one of these games, so I don't know how long it's been an, an issue, but they are very big on their animations. Uh, and baseball, as we were talking about earlier, is a very leisurely sport in that someone could pop up a ball and a player will, you know, do a light jog over to where the ball's going to be, and then they'll just simply catch it, and that's an out. Um, like, that's but, been my whole problem with playing the show, right? Is Right is the fact that uh is the fact that like I can play Madden because it's like a strategy game, right? Right. Like yes. it's a really hardcore strategy game with some action bits to it. Yeah. But like playing the show just like it's just so it's very dry. And it's, it, it's, and it's fun. Like it's fun to make it so the Rockies are a champion. Right. For once. But Well, you know, I mean there there are very little uh things that do require there are little things in there that do require skill especially when it comes down to pitching uh you know trying to pitch well it's always nice but it'll be little things that i've been running into just little frustrations where there will be a you know uh, let's say someone hits a hits a shot into the first baseman who's like 10 feet away from uh the first base as the batter's running towards first base. All I have to do is jog over there and stand on the base. But because it's very obsessed with getting that precise animation, I will press over there. I will start jogging over to the first base. 
And then at some point, it's supposed to just automatically do it. Uh, and I've had it on multiple occasions where I've, you know, uh, let, it, let it go maybe a little bit too early. And then the guy just ends up standing there less than a foot away from the bag. And the guy runs through and is safe. Uh, or I held it uh, for too long. And he just runs past the base. And is standing in foul territory looking like a doofus. Because the guy just ran past him and was safe. Uh, there are other issues where there will be pop flies. And you try to stand in the little baseball that uh, appears on the ground to show you where you're supposed to be. Uh, but the baseball changed a little bit where it was going at the last second, and sometimes there's supposed to be an automatic animation where for those automatic outs, and sometimes that won't trigger, and the ball will just land right next to you uh, while you're doing nothing. Uh, yeah, things that, like that. Yeah, sports games have those problems. Like I was actually playing Madden online the other day, and you know I was playing a game against this Niners player, and he teleported. That's the best way I can oh, describe no. it. His okay. save, because of EA's shitty net code and peer-to-peer -peer service, his fucking safety teleported and picked the ball off. <laughs> Is it like something that you saved on a replay? No, I was I turned the PlayStation off because I was so dumb. Oh, fair enough. Oh, um, did I tell you my TV? Okay, so you know how my TV had that warning on it about the bulb for years. Yes, yes, for years. It finally died. Oh my god, really? Seven years Holy later. Holy hell, seven years. Seven that, years. Wow, that uh, took forever. Yeah, I know. And I'm glad it took seven years. You want to know why? Why is that? A cheap replacement bulb now is 25 bucks. A good one is 50 Oh, really? That's not much money wow. at all. Yeah, so I... Well, now, I, yeah, but seven years ago when you were in high school. Yes, yeah, so, well, yeah, but e even then, se well, seven years ago, replacement bulbs were $200. Well, that's also so, a big issue. Ugh. Yeah, so what ended up happening, so I ordered one off, I ordered a cheap one off Amazon because I'm, I am back to, like, I, I am, I have made the commitment I'm getting a new TV at the end of this year. Cool. Um, Good. Same size, I'm going to 50 inch again, because like, so, uh, you know, I, I bought my mom that PlayStation TV for Christmas, uh -huh. and she, she has been letting, she has been graciously letting me borrow it while mine is waiting for the technology to get returned. Yes. Um, and she's using her, like, old, tiny, standard def TV. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what, what ended up, and what playing games on this thing has made me realize is... I can't go smaller than 46 inches for a television. Why is that? I just, like, I can't. I've been spoiled. You just can't? And after you've spent seven years at 50? Yeah, like, after I've, like, because, like, I will, you know, like, Ray and I will be streaming and we'll sit in those chairs next to my bed and we, like, have to, like, like squint an inch up to read anything. Oh, that's true. You You have a lot of people, you have at least one person coming over to play games a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you kind of do need that, don't you? Yeah, and then, like, we did eight-player Smash on it, and uh, that was a fucking clusterfuck of having no that... idea what was going on. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, were, we were pretty fucking done at that point. So, uh, But the other thing that's made me realize, though, is how much TV quality, like, as far as picture and color has gotten since I bought that set. Right. Like okay. the the difference in color and fucking quality, like quality of image, is a whole different world. This thing, seven fucking, years, yeah, like this thing, fucking just dumb. And this thing, I got it in twenty twelve. So this thing, this thing's only a five year difference, and it fucking slaps the crap out of um, you know, out of mine. Right. So, so I've kind, I have the set picked out. Well, I have it lowered down to two sets, basically. Okay. Uh, one of them is a 50-inch Sony. Again, uh -huh. from Sony again. Uh, it has the exact number of HDMI ports I want, which is four. Co composite, component, 120 hertz refresh rate, LED, TV, all this good shit. Uh -huh. And the other one I'm looking at, it's Vizio's best TV that is not a 4K. Okay. And uh, the 50-inch for the Vizio 
uh, sorry, is uh, is uh, seven hundred dollars, or seven sixty. And uh-huh. if I go, and if I go for last year's model, which I don't think there's really a difference, um, if I go for last year's model, then it's a. Uh, hold on one sec. Sorry, it, the page is still loading. If I go for da, 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 da. if I go for last year's model, it is six hundred. Okay. So, but if I go for last year's Sony, it's seven hundred, and you know they they make the best TVs in the business. Like no, that's true. They're they're the most expensive, but yes, they're they're also the best quality. Pretty good. Um, so, I, I'm pretty set on that Sony. I'm hoping they can stay in stock uh, long enough for me to pick one up. Right. Yeah, that'll be cool. Because, yeah, uh, you guys are going to need those TVs for live streaming you're doing. Yeah. And then uh, this one, this old one, I can give to my mom and use uh, use that PlayStation TV for a computer monitor. There you go. Yeah, 24-inch 24, awesome. 24 computer monitor. Fucking right. <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> Heroes of the Storm right. on that thing. Fuck yeah. Right. Uh, cool. Yeah. So uh, we won't cover too much news because that's kind of unscripted accesses thing. Sure. Hey, uh, did you guys check March Mayhem stuff? No, uh, but I did want to talk about uh, about Star Wars Battlefront 2. 2? Or Star Wars Battlefront 3, sorry. Okay. Right. Well, yes. The Star Wars Battlefront. Yeah, how, how fucking sick does that look? I I can't... It's hard for me to form an opinion simply because, like, I don't know whether I'm looking at actual gameplay or not. Uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very hesitant, very cautious, but I like where they're going with it. Right, right. Like, and that's supposedly the graphics engine, so the game is probably going to work look a little worse than that, but still, it's going to look really good. It's going to look good. Yeah, a, a, a current-gen Star Wars Battlefront game with what looks like some really cool uh, dogfights, which is what I'm looking forward to, uh, on some actual big maps that can handle that instead of what was going on in previous I, like, games. I wonder if they're going to do 32 on 32. I really do, because, like... They could probably know. handle it. Like, because the, the console version, like, the PS2 version was 8 on 8, and then the Xbox version was 16 on 16, and then the PC was 32 on 32 with the help of mods. Right. So I'm hoping that it's the same thing. I, I'm hoping that it's the case where everyone gets 32 versus 32 now. Like, that yeah. would be the hope. That would be very cool. I'm hoping. Uh, but uh, if you did not own a PlayStation 4... They are doing yet another bundle. Uh huh. It is a white PS4 with Ooh. a Stormtrooper faceplate, and it comes with the game coming out when the game comes out. Yeah, no price on that until. Nope, but uh, I imagine yeah. it'll be the same as the other ones, four fifty. I think it'll be four fifty. You think maybe if it's down the line enough, they won't try to knock it down to four hundred. Well, the way they're doing the Batman bundle. Is Batman? If you just want a black console with the game with it, it's four hundred. Uh-huh. If you want, if you want the special like gun metal console with the Batman logo with the game, it's four fifty. Right. So, okay. Is Battlefront trying to come out around the same time? No, that's coming out like Christmas. Batman's coming right. Out that, in that, summer. That's what I was thinking. Was do you think they would consider a price drop of like fifty bucks or something like that, at least for the bundle by Christmas time? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's been how many? It's been, it's been a little bit of time. Yeah, but like pr- price cuts are dictate. Like what dictates a price cut is two things, like how it's selling and you know what like have has it gotten cheaper to produce? It's probably gotten a little cheaper to produce, but PS4 is drastically, drastically outselling its fucking competition. That's like, true. Like at current rate. It is going to double the Xbox One sales. Do you think that any of uh, any Xbox? I don't know if we know of any notable Xbox One exclusives coming, or what could happen at E3. Do you think that could influence it at any, or do you Halo think they're going to just Halo go ahead and stick 5, with what they're doing? Halo Five, if it and like that, this holiday season can turn things around for Microsoft. And here's why: Sony hasn't announced anything. 
Right. There's nothing announced. Uncharted got delayed. Yep. I thought Uncharted was going to be there, like, make our stand, look at this game type deal. Right. That is not the case. Nope. Um So, that, that goes to, okay, well, Sony has nothing. And this holiday, Microsoft is going to have Halo 5, which looks awesome. That game looks great. Everything about it, it, it does. It, it has me interested for sure. It looks. It looks. The the beta was awesome. Uh, they've been doing this like audio drama called Hunt the Truth. That is like a reporter trying to find out the truth about Master Chief, and is really? like, yeah, it's really cool. I'll link it to you. They're doing. They're doing it, like every week. It's really cool. And okay. Then, and then that, that like commercial they did, like they did one because there's gonna be Spartan Lock and there's gonna be Master Chief, and you switch between playing the two of them. Right. Like, Spartan Lock is hunting Chief, and like yep. I love his commercial. Where it's like all hail the conquering hero, and it's like, yeah. oh, this looks fucking sick. Like I, I like Halo Four. Leading up to Halo Four, I wasn't actually super interested, uh, to be honest with you. I didn't but... care about the story at all for that fucking game. Yeah, which is kind of a bummer. Like, yeah. cause like I had a feeling of what they were trying to get at with four. And I, you know, care on some level, but I just didn't care enough to actually go out and buy the game itself. This uh, is something different. No, and... you, you didn't have to buy the game because they sent the review copy to the wrong house in the wrong side of the they country. Sent it, they sent it to my house on the other side of the country after, like, months after I had moved away from that house. Yep. Uh... And you weren't even the one reviewing it. I was. <laughs> yep. That was good. That was real good. But anyway, beyond that, anyway, that's, you know, stuff happened and that's fine. But um, yeah, Halo Five. That that that's this is a story I would love to see uh, play out. This seems like a character that I could be interested in, uh, which is cool. So, but that'll be good. And th- and then we're gonna have that later on this year, I assume. Uh, October twenty seventh. So yeah, because so- Sony, honestly, for the most part, I was hoping that Sony would have a decent lineup by this point. But, like I mean, the they- thing is though, it's like. According to Shuhei Yoshida, all their studios are working on something. And I'm like, okay, Japan was working on Bloodborne and Last Guardian. Naughty yep. Dog was working on uh, Uncharted. And then Evolution was working on Drive Club. But no, nothing else has been announced from any other studios. We don't know what Media Molecule is doing. We don't know what Sony Bend is doing. We don't know what fucking, uh, the, you know, Polyphony Digital is probably working on Gran Turismo. But, you know, like, we have no idea. What? Come on. Gran Turismo 6 coming in 2020. Or 7, sorry. Um, Liphony Digital now coming out with Burnout Paradise 2. In my dreams. Right. Um, <laughs> um, but and that knowing that makes me excited, I feel like this E3 is... I guess I don't want to get too excited, but I feel like it's the biggest chance to, for everything to just blow up. I think for everyone but Nintendo. I think Nintendo's done... Stick a fork in They're done. I don't think they're done as a company. I think that like the Wii U is going to have whatever games that's been announced and maybe a couple extras, and then they're going to focus on whatever their next project is. I mean, they're still working on this new Star Fox. Uh, They still have this Zelda stuff that you know they're obviously not showing the game. They're not showing off the game at the convention itself, but maybe they'll show some footage. Uh, and you know. I don't know. They're, they're, they've been talking about uh, with the new Mario Kart tracks. There's these little details that have been added on that are brand new to F Zero. These F Zero tracks, and no one's saying that they're rumors or anything. But I was thinking, you know, maybe they're maybe they're testing. They're thinking about it. They've been thinking about stuff for F Zero, but I don't know if that's even going to translate into a game or not. Yeah, we know how um, that goes with Nintendo. So I mean, I'm not. And uh, I, who knows what they're doing with Mario? Because it's been a little while since we've gotten like a. Uh, a Mario title, at least yeah. in the galaxy vein or something like that. Like, I mean, it's um, been, it's been, nah, Mario, Mario was only in 2013. I mean, that's not that far off. No, it's not that far off. But, you know, when you talk about Mario Galaxy, Mario Galaxy 2, kinds of games, uh, there hasn't been anything necessarily new yet. You know, when they try to do something new beyond the regular 3D world stuff. Yeah, like, you know, I, I, I'm Which curious. is cool. Those games are cool, but I'd like you know. I I feel like they haven't shown their entire hand yet. Um, Versus Microsoft, because they need to get back in the game, they're just like announce fucking everything. 
basically at this point that's all they can do i mean what else what else can they do but their q4 this year like they got three titles this year for the holiday that are exclusive that are fucking huge Uh uh-huh so you got halo right you got forza and then you got tomb raider that's right that is fucking gigantic you know, yeah, that it like Halo is a huge tentpole. It always sells millions of copies for them. Four is the same thing, and la- the last, the Tomb Raider reboot is the best-selling Tomb Raider in the franchise. Right. You know, um, so, yeah. So, so you know, like, and then Sony right now has. We don't know what's coming this holiday. We don't know, and yeah, yeah, you know, and I mean. Right now, Microsoft is winning the price war because, I mean, I forgot if PS4 has a bundle right now besides the Batman bundle. But, like, if you wanted to buy a PS4 today, uh, not not wait for the Batman bundle. You want it now. You want to play right. nothing now. Um, yes, you want to play Blood, Bloodborne now. Yes. I, sorry. <laughs> but you want to play Bloodborne now. You can get a PS4 for $400 with The Last of Us Remastered. And I believe they have a Grand Theft Auto bundle also, but I'm double-checking that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they do. And if you can track down one of those Black Friday bundles, it's Grand Theft Auto and The Last of Us, if they're still around. Right. Um, for 400 bucks. On the other end hmm. of that, Microsoft has, three, has two different bundles. There's the Halo bundle, which is 350 for uh, an Xbox One and the no longer broken Master Chief collection. Yes. And then there's uh, the Assassin's Creed bundle for, which is three fifty for an Xbox One, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which is fucking awesome, and Assassin's Creed Unite, which was okay. a, which was fucking terrible. Right. So, I mean, yeah, man. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I think that Microsoft is... I think Because they... Similar to last holiday season, where they had to win last holiday season to stay in the game, and they did. They sold more over Christmas and Black Friday in the month of November. Yeah. I think they're going to do it again this holiday season. Sure. I think they have a stronger marketing arm than Sony does. And I think oh, that for they're... Sure. I think their names are bigger because I mean you okay. So what does Sony have that they can announce for this holiday? A David Cage game, okay, those sold well but weren't huge. Nope. Uh, Persona Five, I think Persona Five is gonna blow up, but it's not like Halo. It's it's gonna be in the hardcore market. That's not something that's gonna. I don't think I it's th- ever going to be a big casual. I thing. think I'm, I think it get to the I could get to the level of where Final Fantasy is. I really do. Cause, but I, you know, like I think this would be the game that does it. Like, okay, okay. Sony, Sony Santa Monica is working on God of War, maybe. Right, that I mean, that could be something. Yeah. You know, so and it's the tenth anniversary for God of War, and they're doing that remake of three. So I mean. Oh, that's right. So I mean, like, yo, you know, we got this remake of three out. Look, we know they're like I can imagine like. Ten years of fucking Kratos murdering people, and we got that remastered one coming out next month. Well, this holiday season, God of War four, and it's like it's you know it's just, it's like a new type of mythology, like it's Norse mythology, and it's super kick ass. You know, sure. Like that, that's something that they could do. Uh, the Gorilla is still working on something, so like another kill zone maybe. Um, you know, have have that holiday matchup of Killzone versus Halo. Right. Yeah. God, um, do you remember when fucking Killzone One and Killzone Two were both called Halo Killers? Do, do you remember I actually, this? I, I I actually don't remember during Killzone One, but I remember people talking about Killzone Two like that. Yeah, like like Killzone's gonna be the Halo killer, and it's just like fucking never happening. It never it, did. As as never... good as those games were. It was like Killzone mostly, two and like, Killzone two and three were awesome. They were great. Yeah, they were but, cool games. But yeah, nothing uh, was ca- nothing captured. Yeah, that's nah. um, yeah. I don't know. It's gonna be nuts. Uh, how how many 
or uh, you think they're going to rely more on sequels, just like a lot of sequels? You think they're going to try and bring any new IP? In? I I think Sony is very much the everyman, so I think they're going to have a little bit of everything. Same as last generation, right? Uh, like last generation, we got new IPs like Infamous and Uncharted, but we got to see more Ratchet and Clank. We definitely got to see more Metal Gear, you know. So yeah. Yeah, it, what, do you, what do you think about Xbox though? I mean, it's, they just they came out with Sunset Overdrive. They That's something are that they, fucking, they want to pursue. Like they are gonna hold on to fucking sequels like no other. They sound, like, yeah. Like uh, Phil Spencer is a lot better than Matrick is, but he's still a you know businessman. I, yeah. All right. So this is what I'm saying for Microsoft. We're of course gonna see Halo Four as a Tomb Raider. I think they're gonna announce Gears. And it's gonna come in 2016. And okay. I think that, sorry, and that, and I think that we're gonna get something from Rare because fucking, they everyone keeps hyping Rare. Just everyone at Microsoft's like Rare's working on something cool. Uh, Are they directly like, saying that, or yeah, do you think much. they're just saying like Killer Instinct two? Well, they've already in, Killer Instinct already. Ha- it's in the middle of its second season right now. Oh, well, you're, if you're counting the second season as a new Killer Instinct game. No, but like I don't think they're going to do KI2. And that's not even developed by them anymore. That's developed by fucking Iron Galaxy. Dave Lang. Oh, Dave Lang, right. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, but, like, Microsoft uh, currently has the better exclusive lineup. You know, if like, they can they figure out some way to, to work that rare name, use one of those IPs to... Like that that's a way to get back on top, I feel. At least in like the hardcore market. Get some of yeah. those in like while to, to also being like a good a, face. Release, to release a couple of those and not have them be terrible, that'd be great. Right. Yeah. Um That'd be really cool. Cause like right now Xbox One does have better exclusives. Like I love the PS4. I think it's a better overall system. The interface isn't shitty. It's easier to live stream. The dashboard isn't slow and cluttered. Um, right. I, uh, the, I think the system looks better in an entertainment center. Um, you know, the control. Yeah, the controllers are about even, but I do prefer the PS4 one. The PS4 one comes with rechargeable batteries versus having to buy one. Um, <laughs> but like, you look at the you know you look at the fucking Xbox One's exclusives like Sunset Overdrive, Forza, Killer Instinct, Halo, uh, Dead Rising Three. It, it's on the PC, but the PC version is broken as shit still. You know, uh, like, it, it, you know, D4. It has a lot of really... You know, like, Sony definitely has a lot more indie titles going for it that are awesome. But, like, if you want to play, like, full retail games, like, the Xbox That's true. One has more for you. Right. If you well, want an interface that isn't horrible and you play mostly third-party games, however... Uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. When as soon as e, I think this E three is really going to be telling of where everyone's going. Really exciting. Uh, so we'll see. I'm excited. Uh, All right. right well, uh, uh, anyway, news, 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 yeah. news, 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 and then question. All right, so uh, I only really have one big piece of news, and that's uh, Borderlands franchise director and creator quits Gearbox Software. Oh, really? Um, uh, yeah, it says that Matthew Armstrong, who was credited as writer and game design for the original Borderlands, has announced he has left Gearbox Software on his Twitter account. Things changed. No longer working at Gearbox Software. I will always love Gearbox, but it's adventure time. He, his tweet came after, a day after condolences for the recently closed 2K Australia studio. The Australia guys were amazing to work with, and not one of them I wouldn't work with again. Good luck, my friends. Wow. Sucks. All right, well. Um, all right, so moving forward. Did, did you guys uh, talk about Don Matrick last week? Yeah, that was on a, that was on unscripted. Cool, all right. Uh, in, in looking up, I just you know, something I found was in trying to look up stuff on Dom Matrick. I went to Electronic Arts Wikipedia page, and apparently, like nothing happened between 1991 and 2000 for EA, and then one thing happened in 2000, and then it skips entirely to 2004. 
<laughs> like the, the entire time, nearly the entire time Don Matrick was at EA is just erased from history as far as Wikipedia is concerned. Because Peter Moore is Peter Moore is a skeevy salesman, but yeah. it, at least he like somewhat respects gamers, as we saw with his experiences with Sega and Microsoft, and now EA. Right. But like Don Matrick is just a skeevy, shitty salesman who is fucking awful. It's a bummer when you actually read about it on Wikipedia pages. Like you'll see, you see, like uh, the very the very first time or one of the first few um, acquisitions that EA did. They took the new acquisition, put it under the supervision of Don Matrick, and basically, as far as I can tell, Don Matrick was the start of breaking down acquisitions until there's just nothing left. Yeah. And has now pretty much made that legacy. I, I feel as though, like, like people who are only on the business side of things don't understand any of the creative side. And, yeah. you, know, I, you know, Nick handles our entire business side. He's a great boss to work for because he yeah. makes it yeah. he makes it so I don't have to worry about that shit and I can just be creative and do what I need to do. Yeah, but, Nick's a cool dude. But like but he understands the creative side and understands that like you need to let your kind of creators create. And if that means occasionally they say something controversial or shitty or you know, like yeah, they can't be like Hitler is awesome. But like you know, if they're why not if... right? Okay, yeah, I got it. I'm gonna turn that yeah. into a comic. <laughs> uh, but As it come, by the way, if anyone asks, I know that wasn't there isn't gonna be a comic this week or the next couple weeks. Tori's working on a special project for the website right now. That's why. Ooh. Okay. Uh, um, and she needs to focus her attention on that. Yeah. So, Fair enough. Yeah, this is a bummer about uh, Gearbox, uh, you know. But then again, they got plenty of talent. They got Ash Birch. They got great writers. Uh, Borderlands Two was the third best game of that year. Actually, fourth if we include remakes because of Persona Four Golden. But still, um, well, uh, hopefully we'll see what they're doing next soon. Yep. All right, we got two questions, then we're done. Okay. Uh. What would you want from an Uncharted Trilogy remaster for PS4? Well, Uncharted 2 is a perfect video game, so nothing on don't, that. Don't, don't touch nothing on that. Yeah, Uncharted 2, if you just make it prettier and run at a higher frame rate, you're good. Don't well, I mean, is, is, this is about like creating a collection for the PS4? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean I, guess, I guess we wouldn't want to change anything gameplay-wise. But yeah, Uncharted uh, 2, perfect game. That that game is fucking perfect. Well, yeah, I that is perfect. I, I would have given it a 10 had I reviewed it. Uh, Who did Uncharted... review that? No one. We didn't do a text review. What? No, yeah, we didn't do a text review for that one, I don't think. Anyway, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, Uncharted 1, make the shooting less floaty. Make the melee a little better. Uh, make some of the fights less frustrating. Uncharted 3 just makes some of the fights less long and less frustrating. Yeah, man, some of the gun fights that happened in 3. Just dragged... Like, that was why, like, when we did Game of the Year awards that year, and it came down to, like, well, we got Portal versus Uncharted, like, I I was... <laughs> well, my Game of the Year was Catherine, which no well, one... Oh, right, but that... Yeah. No one wanted to side with me on that. Like, and the fact that, like, like, because Anthony's number one was Zelda... And I was, and I knew that I was gonna have to get points for Portal Two later in that night. I decided to fall on the sword, let Gears <laughs> go ahead of Catherine. Yep. Uh, while falling on that sword, though, I got Yakuza ahead of Killzone, though, so that was okay. Yep. Um, Yakuza fucking. It all so worked good. out in that weird fucked up list. Yeah. Uh, and but then we got to the top three, and it was Zelda versus Portal versus Uncharted, and then Anthony gave up the fights. So we're like, okay, Zelda's fucking at three. And it came down to Portal vs. Uncharted. And Portal 2 is still an amazing fucking game that is near perfect. Yep. Uh, and I, I, my review ended up in the paper for that game. Oh, really? Nice. Uh, yeah. Because uh, my problem with it was... My only problem with Portal 2 is at points 
in the game during the later sections, it isn't about solving a puzzle as it is finding a little dot on the wall that, that you can put a portal on. Yeah. And that was really my only issue with that game, though. Um, that, that's a relatively small issue. Yeah. Grand scheme of things, so. Yeah, everything else about that game was great. Yeah. Um, yeah, what I want from an Uncharted trilogy, and then overall, like, just bundling those games together and putting them on the PS4 would be, like, I'm not sure I would buy it, but, like, if you haven't played those games, like, because a lot of people didn't own a PS3 that I knew, at least. Um, you yeah. So, well, like, right, especially now with, like, the PS4 becoming that main console now. Yeah, like, the PS4, like, I know, I barely know anyone with an Xbox. Like, really? like hardcore Xbox fanboys and Kevin. That's at, that's all I know. Like, like Brian has one. Mark oh. has one because of Brian. Uh-huh. And, then, and then Kevin. Uh, that's, that's who I know who owns an Xbox. Yeah, like, and, you know, I, like... The only reason I own one is because I got a Buku tax return uh, last year, and I, I, I knew Killer Instinct. I liked it. I played it at a friend's house. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I really... Oh, man. I now would be why. the time to introduce Uncharted to people that normally would not have had that chance. Yeah, and then you can be like, well... And then, like, for people who are kind of on the fence or, like, played uh, Tomb Raider... Um, yep. and like liked Tomb Raider it's like well this is like Tomb Raider but better you know right and, like, and what's interesting is there's not a whole lot of tweaks that you would have to make to Uncharted because like especially 2 and 3 they really just kind of had it nailed down Yeah, like there's two, like a tweak you could do to 3 and then like 2 is a perfect game as we've said perfect yep and then 1 has 1 there's a lot of fix stuff you can fix but even then, it still kind of holds up pretty well. It it's, holds up fine. Like, I, I had some issues getting through it. Just, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. Like, it is a hard game. It's hard, and it's not necessarily as interesting as the other two, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I think they do a good job of introducing the characters, though. And, like, if you remember yeah. that that game came out in 2007. Right. You know, if you, that, yeah, if you have that context. But, um... Like, if you have... And then, if, oh... What 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 if they what if they threw what if they had a, their team come together and make like a PS4 era Uncharted multiplayer or like took the Uncharted three multiplayer? So like what they did for Halo Two it. Anniversary, where they did basically like, like Halo Two Anniversary wasn't a full multiplayer, but it was like six maps. Uh, and it was like six maps now seven because they decided they're gonna do a seventh for free for fans who bought the cheap collection early. Oh. Um. And what else was it? It was uh, there was something else in there, but you know, like, like it was just it was generally things of that nature. Yeah. Um. God, what's the word I'm looking for? Um. Yeah. Uh... But, but anyway, it, it was things of that nature. Uh, for you know, for like to add on to this other cool Halo stuff, and then if they had the original multiplayer in there to play, that'd be cool too. Right, yeah. If they, if they can do something like that for, well, I mean, Uncharted multiplayer is so recent. There's no way could add. You, there's no way you could add the original and the tweaked version because that'd just be kind of weird. Hey, they did it for the Master Chief Collection. Why not? You can play. You can play. The multi- you can play the multiplayer for Halo One, Two, Three, Four, and Anniversary of Two. That's true. Um, but anyway, if they, if they had like some some sort of, they gave you a PS4 collection with the multiplayer or the new uncharted comes out that would be pretty cool that would be cool i agree with that especially introducing it to you know the people who tend to hop onto the main console which so far happens to be a ps4 for this generation it is trouncing the other guys like like i mean it is it is taking other guys to town Um, right so so now would be the time uh, to do something like that. That'd be cool. Yeah. So um yeah. You know, uh I yeah, that's kind of what I'd want. I want to um, play Uncharted 2 again. Do it. You you got a PS3? PS3. I need to get Uncharted 2. You don't own that game? I don't own a lot of games. I tend to play through a game once and then I'm done with it, which is what made Gamefly so great. Uh, uh, yeah, I like I I like certain get like 
early on I was really big into collecting, but now it's just like I want to collect, I want to own certain games. Like right. l- like games that are on my buy list right now that are already out. Like I want to go I want to go back and pick up Donkey Kong and Mario 3D World cuz I rented both those and love them. Right. And then like GTA on PS4 cuz I'm renting it right now. Yeah. Um like I do I do that with a lot of Nintendo games. Like I bought like I'll I'll you know, I'll rent a Nintendo game, I'll beat it, I'll love it, I'll even 100% it on a rental, but not buy it for years after that just cuz they never drop in price. Right, that's a that's a big deal there. You know, and I like and I want to pay them for their effort. But <laughs> they but know what it, they're doing. Um uh, Anyway, final question. Guitar Hero Guitar Hero Live or Rock Band 4? Oh, that's right. Is this even a question? I can't imagine. Cuz you um, get all your DLC from Rock Band 1, 2, and 3 in Rock Band 4. Carries over. And that's, yeah, Rock Band like um and if if they i was commenting somewhere about this but if this new guitar hero game is solely guitar like if you're just playing a guitar by yourself to this fmv game and you just go through the story mode and they have new dlc but you obviously can't carry on uh the older oh, you songs because like they you know they couldn't you could they didn't even make it so you could carry from game to game on the fucking old system i don't know why they even allow it now well, anyway, right. Go. I mean, they they, sh- they should obviously, but it seems like they're not, uh, yeah. which is nuts. And when you add that all together, Rock Band lets you have all your songs. Rock Band lets you play the full band. It Rock might band let you lets have all you, your instruments. They let they may let you have your old instruments, which has been a complaint. Which, like um, in my case, the only thing I buy new was a drum set. Because I have right. OG Rock Band 1 drums that are loud as shit. Yep. Uh, those yep. things are fucking loud. Um, you know, like, Joe figured out a way to make it not as bad by putting shirts over them. Right. But they're still loud. So I, I want to, like, like, I would, like, if they say you can use all your in- old instruments, I'd be like, great, I'm going to go buy the game with a drum kit. Uh, yep. Because... Cause I had to buy a new microphone last year when I went to that when I we had that big summer party at Tori's house and some bastard broke my microphone. Cool, fucking jerks. <laughs> so, like fucking oh. who? Like, like I realized it was a bunch of drunk people, but like w- when I'm drunk, I treat people's property with respect. Oh, uh, I know, but there everyone's a different kind of drunk. I know. know still, I. It, it you know it wasn't expensive to replace, but it was irritating. It's an it's annoying. Yeah. Um, Everything else was great because it's kind of hard to fucking break guitars. Uh, you can you can break the little stuff like you know the little switches or something, but usually it's, uh, you know it's hard to break the fundamental yeah uh, bits. But yeah. anyway, back oh, to. Oh, I also kind of want to buy another guitar because like well, the Guitar Hero guitar is still great. The original Rock Band guitar is super not great. Yeah, the the that's one thing that Guitar Hero always had, and it's funny because that guitar was designed during the time Guitar Hero was made with the the people from Harmonix. Um, yeah, was uh, the, that, that guitar was amazing. But then they had EA's hardware team and not Red Octane, and that's why that happened. Right, yeah. that's that is exact, exactly what that happened. So yeah, Guitar Hero guitar is better. That new Guitar Hero guitar looks cool. I like it. Um. So as an actual guitarist, I wish that I still had to like slide the up and down the neck a little bit. So instead of the six that they have now, it'd be like ten. But that's you know that's I'm, not a big I'm issue. Cool. I'm cool as someone who has no musical talent but still wants to play those games. Exactly for the for the people who don't play guitar, like not having to worry about sliding your hand up and down without looking is going to help people out a lot more. So that'll be great for them. But beyond the guitar being cool, uh, if Rock Band, if the next Rock Band, it's you know next level Rock Band, you can create your own band members to make it look like your friends or something like that. Create your band name and all that, and go you on can, tour. You can, you can do that in three. Um, well, right? No, no, no. I know. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Is all the, all Rock Band Four has to be is like the minimum is be Rock Band Three. 
and like, you've yeah. already like beaten Guitar Hero, this new it, Guitar Hero. It has to be Rock Band three with like maybe some like slight improvements. So yeah, with with some slight improvements, and you know, obviously like forty new songs or fifty new songs to add well, yeah, to the those. main story mode. Obviously, and they made um, it so you can request songs again. And I was just like, I was just like, well, can you just bring all the songs from one, two, and three over to four? Like that's basically all I want. That's all, yeah. That's all you need. Yeah, like, ha- hell, have them all all on one disc. Yeah, like I, I've spent like like I look at Rock Band and I realize like man, I spent like fucking like at least two hundred dollars on DLC for that fucking game. Yep. So, uh, anyway, uh, that's that for now. Uh, rock, rock we- Band, rock, rock Band, hands down until Guitar Hero shows something off soon that really puts but it out man, in front. If you if you want a '90s FMV game. Where you can not uh, press buttons and watch as people stare at you like you've just like turned into this awful alien. Yep. Uh, oh, cool. And uh, in honor of you, those who celebrated 420 yesterday, I need to go out and buy fancy uh, light bulbs today because I'm a classy guy with some very upscale light fixtures. Oh, is that so? <laughs> uh huh. Oh, God. Very good. Yeah, living in Washington. Oh, you must... I thought Reno was like a pot smoker's paradise. Oh, you know, um, there's a place here down on Pine that's selling uh, joints that are a gram's worth for four twenty. And it's legal. It's, it's legal. Like it's perfectly legal, as long as, you know, you do it in your own home. That's all that matters. God, I mean... And that and all that money goes to and some of that money is taxes that can help pay for things. Yep. Why is oh my God, I'm not yeah, I'm not gonna go into the marijuana. We don't we don't need podcast. to get into that here. But it's a fun time. Yep. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna grab some of that and play some Pokemon. But, you know, I I've I've never been fond of smoking weed. Like I like I you know, as you know, I turn into Snorlax. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. So do yeah. I. I use it more as like a sleep aid thing than anything else. Honestly, I put on like a good movie and then sit in bed. One of my one of my close friends is a really big like stoner pothead. He's he's the nicest guy in the world, but he's he is a stoner pothead. Sure. Uh, and like yesterday, we were talking with him, and we we're just like, "God damn it, John, doing drugs all the time." It's just like, "Well, marijuana isn't a drug; it's a plant." <laughs> it's the most stoner fucking answer to anything That's... I've ever heard in my entire life. It is. It, it really is, and it's ridiculous. Anyway. Um, but hey, you know, whatever. It's what, cool. What ifs? Anyway, uh, all our lovely listeners, thank you. Please, please comment, and we shall read your comments and questions next week. We will have uh, a fun time. We are on iTunes. We are on. Um, we're on iTunes. We're on YouTube. <laughs> we are on the Twitch. You okay there? No, I'm just having a good time over here. This is fun. We, we are on the Twitch. We like Twitch on now. On the Twitch. We are uh, on the Twitch. All, all on the Gamer Access. I'll look up the Gamer Access on all those. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you next week. Also, if you're looking for a great gaming computer, please what? look up it. What? Gaming computer. Get, oh, God damn it! No, not I like now. those. No. <laughs> See, we've we 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 pre-programmed Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> when someone says gaming computer, he's just like ACI Moon Dog. <laughs> oh God. Uh, yeah, this laptop it's weighing me down. I I, gotta... I I look forward to when you and I record those advertisements this week. That that'll be fun. Um. Right, anyway. So, anywho. Um. We. All right, well, like I said, we'll be back next week. We got a bunch of fun stuff planned for the week. Um, Yeah, all right, well, uh, have a nice day. Nice week, everyone. Happy gaming, you guys. Happy gaming. We love you. Bye.